turn that on. So we're going to get started with a little video to begin with. The UMD International Programs and Services Office provides a wide variety of study abroad program opportunities all around the world. We offer semester, year, summer, and short-term faculty-led programs. We believe participating in the study abroad experience allows you to set yourself apart. You will gain many transferable skills that will help you in future careers or continued education. and throughout your life from here on out. We've seen the personal growth that takes place in students. We've seen students step outside of their comfort zone and come back with a new sense of independence and self-motivation, but also a realization that they can do anything from here forward. Because of their experience, they've learned to become more adaptable, flexible, and have gained a greater ability to empathize. Students learn what it's like to live in and engage with people from other cultures. You make connections and friendships to last a lifetime, and you become much more globally engaged and aware about what is going on in the world. College is a great time to take advantage of an experience like this. You can fulfill degree requirements and have an amazing adventure while living and studying abroad. Studying abroad affords you the opportunity to enrich your academic career in a way that's challenging to replicate. You can study abroad anytime after freshman year or completing 24 credits after high school graduation. The best time to go is very individualized and can depend on things like your academics, what's offered abroad, and what your goals are. We have programs available for nearly all majors or minors we have at UMD, including international student teaching options. Most credits you earn abroad will count as UMD resident credit and all courses will show up on your transcript and count towards your GPA. Unless you're planning to study another language, you should know that in nearly all our locations, coursework is available in English, even in non-English speaking countries. So don't hesitate to choose a location where English isn't the first language. However, we encourage you to take a language course while in country as it'll only enhance your experience while there. We recommend starting to plan for study abroad at least a year or more in advance. There's a lot to get in order, such as your academics and ensuring your courses are approved to transfer back, to getting travel documents such as your passport or visa ready. It also gives you more time to prepare, save money, and apply for scholarships. Program costs vary. Some cost more, some are similar to, and a few are even less than what you pay to attend UMD. It really depends on the university's tuition, cost of living, plane tickets, housing, just as it would when you're looking for universities in the US. Our office will give you tools to help you find a program that fits your budget. We also award over $80,000 in scholarships to UMD students annually and list several other scholarship opportunities on our website. Additionally, financial aid can apply to your study abroad program. So plan early, set a budget, and research locations to find the best fit for you. If you find your heart is set on a location, but it's not a good fit either academically or financially, we strongly encourage you to be open to locations you may have never considered before. We should also mention students who participate in our semester or year programs have more time to travel and explore during breaks and on the weekends, and many are able to visit places on their bucket list during their time abroad. We feel confident that you'll have a wonderful experience no matter where you end up. Studying abroad is a perspective-changing experience. Not only do you get to see what it's like to be at an academic institution in another country, but you also learn to view the U.S. culture from an entirely different vantage point. It opens your eyes to new ideas and ways of doing things. You can take part in new cultural traditions, try all kinds of food, and see what it's like to live in a different society. As our world becomes more interconnected, all of these experiences will elevate your ability to be a global citizen and pave a path for greater understanding. Every person in our office has either studied, worked, traveled, or lived abroad, and we are very passionate about encouraging these types of invaluable experiences. There's a saying that changing places changes minds, and there is truth in that. The things that you learn and the ways that you grow cannot be duplicated. So I think getting out of my comfort zone and just learning about other people, um, other ways of life. You'll get to go on so many different adventures, gaining total independence, perspectives from so many different cultures, and yet None of them are right or wrong, they're just kind of different. New food, just learn new customs. You'll just be able to see the world. It will totally affect your life from here on out. You become another innovation of yourself. They come back to like a new person. And the importance of what it kind of teaches you about yourself, certainly, but what it 
helps you understand about others. Only just lifelong impacts. A humbling experience to become more empathetic. I could go on and on and on. So capable of so many things. Your ability to, get, to connect with people expands every time you challenge yourself. Seize every opportunity. You can contribute to your personal, academic, and professional goals. Become better global citizens. It opens your mind. It opens your heart. It tears down the walls and the barriers of misunderstanding and prejudice. It helps build bridges. It allows us to understand each other, understand each other's cultures, and understand each other's ways of living. We are here to support you every step of the way, and we look forward to helping you plan your experience of a lifetime. Take 10. In the current moment, uh, we as a society are facing a lot of uncertainty. There's political unrest throughout the world. We are in the midst of a global pandemic. There is uncertainty all around us. Um, some of us are hesitant to travel. Some of us are unable to travel right now, but that will change. We will get through the uncertainty. Travel will become a possibility for us. And especially because of the uncertainty that surrounds us right now, I believe that traveling, getting to know other people and other cultures throughout the world is an important tool for helping us get to greater global peace and understanding. All right, and I did, I do just want to note um, that we want this to be as conversational as possible. So if you have questions, feel free to put them in the chat. Um, I, since I'm presenting, Lelia will be able to either answer those questions in the chat or just address them to the group. Um, otherwise, we can definitely talk about questions at the end, but please make this as conversational. Um, we do want to be able to get as much information across to you, but as also as helpful information too. So feel free to ask those questions. So I'm just going to talk a little bit about myself. So uh, my name is Courtney. I'm a senior here at UMD. I'll graduate in December uh, with a marketing degree and a minor in sustainable business organization. Um, throughout my career at UMD, I um, have worked with UMD Athletics. Uh, I've been a part of Mortarboard. A it's a senior honor society. Um, I'm a, an alumni of Phi Sigma Sigma, which is a sorority on campus and other um, organizations that I've also worked with. And so when I studied abroad, I had the opportunity to study abroad in Stirling, Scotland during spring of 2019, which was my sophomore year of college. I studied at the University of Stirling. Um, so this is a little bit of what the town looked like and where I lived. So Stirling is a lot like Duluth, I would say. Um, it's kind of a smaller town depending on where you're from. I'd say Duluth is not, it's it's like where town meets city, I guess, or city meets nature. Um, so basically we had um, the town that we lived in and I actually lived in town. I lived in a um, apartment with six other, six other girls and we each had our own bedrooms, but we shared um, bathrooms and then a common living space. But on campus, I had like a mountain on campus. We had a lake on campus. Um, so it's just really nice to be able to be outdoors and be able to go hike a mountain whenever I wanted to, unlike Duluth, but it's a lot of that nature as we do have here. So it kind of felt similar to home. And so these are just some pictures of Scotland. When I studied abroad, I went through an affiliate program, ISA. Um, they are just basically a company that our office works with so that students can have opportunities to study in other areas that the university doesn't necessarily have programs at. So with my program um, and the students in it, we gotta travel all over Scotland. Um, you gotta see lots of castles, lots of um, monuments and just different areas of Scotland, which was a really unique opportunity. And then since I did study abroad during a semester, I had ample amount of time to travel. So I traveled pretty much every weekend and I had two spring breaks, one which was like a three week long spring break to prepare for finals. So I got to have my parents come visit and then I also got to go travel for about a week and a half to a bunch of different places. So some different locations I went, I went to Sweden, Norway, Iceland, um, England, Ireland, Greece, Italy, and Amsterdam, I believe are all of them. So these are just some of um, the different locations that I've been and some of the pictures um, that I took while I was abroad. And it was just a, an amazing opportunity. Oh, I also went to Spain, I forgot about that. 
Um, but it was an amazing opportunity to get to go to all these different places. It was my lifelong dream since I was in fourth grade to go to Greece. Um, and so being able to have the opportunity to go there for several days was just a dream come true and just kind of solidified the idea of like starting to make all those dreams come true for myself. So it's a really good experience and I wouldn't change it for the world and absolutely miss traveling and getting to go to all of these places. And I'll let Lelia introduce herself. All right, so I think I might be having some audio issues, so hopefully um, you guys are able to hear me, but um, like I said, my name is Lelia. I'm currently a fourth year student here at UMD. I'll be graduating in um, this upcoming spring. I'm currently a triple major in biochemistry, biology, and Hispanic studies, and some things I am a part of on campus include being a study, um, a Swenson ambassador, as well as being in the pre-pharmacy club, and I'm also in in um, pharmacy research um, with Dr. Klein in the UMD Pharmacy School. Next. So a little bit about my study abroad experience. So I um, was on a faculty-led program for four weeks in the summer of 2019 with professors um, Tobin Estanley and Professor Brady. Um, and like said, it was a um, four-week program in the summer where I was able to live in Salamanca, Spain with a host family, which um, included my host sister and her cat. And I was living um, off campus, um, and it was about a 20 to 25 minute walk from the University of Salamanca, Spain, which is one of the oldest universities in Spain and in the world. Um, and I shared my, um, and I had my room all to myself, and it was um, an amazing time to just be able to live with a native Spaniard. Next. So a little more about my travels. So unfortunately, it was a little more um, strict on time. So our traveling happened every weekend. We were able to go um, to different parts of Spain. For our first week, we went to um, spend a weekend in the southern part of Spain, which included um, Sevilla and Andalusia. Um, the second week, we were able to go to uh, different um, castles around uh, the central part of Spain. In our third week, we also went to um, Toledo, which is also part of central Spain. And in our fourth week, we went around um, the outskirts of Salamanca. Next. So one of the best things that you can do abroad is definitely like see all the different kinds of food that's available. And I had a variety of meals from home cooked meals in like the center um, to photos I had um, in Spain, at least what they do is they have their largest meal um, during lunch and then they do their siesta where you can take like a break. And that's when a lot of um, shops generally tend to close sometimes. Um, and then at dinner, I would usually have protein and a salad, but otherwise um, I would also go out um, to eat sometimes where I could have like traditional Spanish meals like paella and um, tapas, which are like snack sized meals. And of course there's churros and chocolate, um, but on the side we can see like a variety of different be beverages as well. Um, this was the first time I ever had a milkshake that was like topped with so many different toppings and it's like, it was, amazing to just see that was available and there was also bubble tea in Spain. So if you're looking for something, there's you're more than likely able to find it abroad. Next. And I will say one of the best things abroad is being able to go on adventures, whether that's like just by yourself or with a new group of friends that never would have made otherwise. I was able to um, like go on different trips using like the transportation system as well as just walk around um, the city um, because Salamanca is a smaller city. It's not like um, super, super big, but it's big enough where you'll be able to like um, get around and go to many different Different places. So one of the amazing things that you can do is just um, take your opportunities and just look to see what they have in other countries. All right. 
Yeah, and going off a little bit of what Lelia said, one of my favorite things was trying new foods because I was just like a cool opportunity to be to I guess while you're there, you know, just send it, just try something new. And I definitely tried some very weird foods while I was abroad um, that I would not normally eat. Like I ate reindeer and in Norway and like fish in Sweden, just like different foods that I would never normally eat. Um, also paella is one of the greatest inventions of all time. Um, it's like seafood rice meal um, in Spain and it's very good. Um, yeah, that's just my little thing about that. But um, so some reasons to go abroad. Honestly, what else are you going to have the opportunity to be in your like late teens, early 20s and get to go travel and not have other things holding you back like work or kids or um, like marriage or whatever it might be later on in your life that might, you know, hold back those opportunities um, that you could easily take right now. There's so many different places that you can go and travel and just see the world and you're going to gain so many different perspectives only about yourself but about the world and it just really provides um, tons of different skills that you can add to a resume or to a graduate to a graduate level um, application so there's just an abundant amount of reasons why you should study abroad and the more we talk about the, some of the programs and some of the like financial ways there is like should not necessarily be many things holding you back because there's so many opportunities nowadays that you can achieve that achieve studying abroad um and so we're going to talk a little bit more about that as well so a couple more reasons why you should go abroad is that you'll be able to set yourself apart when um for your personal goals um for your future career and in, when you um if you decide to continue in your education in grad school as well as in pre-professional schools you'll be able to like um grow personally and you'll ha definitely have to like um, be more independent and you'll have the self-realization of that and you'll become more flexible and adaptable to all these um, new students and you'll be gaining new life skills and you'll be able to empathize, empathize on a greater level and become more globally engaged and see what's going around um, in the world and you'll be able to see um, what it's like to live in a new culture while seeing what uh, and you'll be able to interact and engage with people from other cultures and when you are applying to like uh, grad schools or for jobs you'll be able to get that competitive edge um, against like um, your peers and you'll even maybe able to get like letters of recommendations or references from your like professors or from colleagues abroad. And additionally, you'll be able to find like new perspectives when you go abroad because you'll be stepping outside of your comfort zone. So you'll be able to see um, like how, um, like said, the United States is viewed from like outside perspectives and you'll be able to open your minds to new ideas, new ways of doing things from different societies, as well as like other cultural traditions. And one of the best things, like said, is to be able to make friends from all over the world. So for when you can study abroad, you can go anytime after your freshman year of college or after 24 college credits post high school graduation. So the reason behind this is just that you can get acclimated to a university setting before you go abroad. Um, and with this, this, excuse me, with um, studying abroad anytime after your freshman year, it does mean you can study abroad in May or summer after your freshman year. So those opportunities still apply. So where can you study? So first off, we have semester and year programs. We have a variety of different programs all throughout the world. And um, some of these countries are not necessarily the only, there's not necessarily one location in those countries. For example, New Zealand has two programs within that country and so does Australia. And there's several others in Europe too. Like Sweden has four different programs. So there is, a variety of programs that are more than just a specific country listed here. And if you do not see a location here, that does not mean it doesn't exist. We work with five affiliate partners that have a variety of programs elsewhere as well. And we can always help um, 
curate that conversation with them as well to find program that is best suited for you and to where you would like to go. And these programs, it really depends um, the length of them. So for a semester when I was in Scotland, my program was the exact same time frame as UMD. But when looking at Australia, their programs start from February to June. It really just depends on the education system within that country. So that's just something to look at in advance. If let's say you need to work in the summer and you can't stay all the way into June, stuff like that is something just to consider. Yeah, and we also have some short-term summer programs, which are similar to the semester. You'll be finding, um, you'll be going on these like by yourself. Um, and these are all like subject to change. Um, and then you can go to the next slide. And then we also have our faculty-led programs, which I went on. Um, and these are subject to change due to COVID. Um, and some of them might be moving to vary year to year so be sure to check the website for the most current program information yeah and something else to note about faculty led is they range from two to six weeks it depends on the program so like winter break is like a typically a two-week program um, and then there's some others that range from four to six weeks depending on may or summer and then international student teaching. So this is for any of you that are looking at being teachers or are pursuing that path. We have three different locations where you could get that international student teaching credit. And these range from eight to 12 weeks. And there's these three different programs. Um, they fit well into your teaching block. So they would just replace that semester of student teaching um, instead with um, a eight to 12 week program. So costs for studying abroad, as mentioned in the introduction video, these costs vary. Some costs, some programs could be the same price as UMD, some could be substantially more, and some could be substantially less. For example, Sweden programs are a lot cheaper than even attending UMD, and Australia programs are a lot more than attending UMD. So it really depends on that country's um, cost of living and cost of education, as well as if you're going to it, Australia is further away, it's going to be a more expensive plane ticket, housing, etc. Um, but just note that scholarships are available. Our office provides $80,000 in scholarships annually, um, as well as any scholarships you already have coming into UMD, um, those will apply. Just make sure you talk with that provider to make sure that that is okay. And you can use financial aid on any program. It can even be a summer program as long as you talk to financial aid. Um, one stop about it so that, that way they can save some of that money aside for that program. Yeah, and then make your experience count while you're abroad. Um, so the courses are for any major and these classes can be taught in English or in like um, the host um, country's language. Um, and even though you may not be taking a um, like language class now, like for example, if you are going to Spain and um, it was helpful for me to take Spanish um, classes in Spanish um, just so that I could better my um, Spanish speaking and uh, comprehension ability. Um, and most of these uh, study abroad credits are posted as UMD resident cred credits and all of them will show up on your transcript and count towards your GPA. And um, for short, short term programs, there are a specific subject area and um, you are responsible for working with your college to make sure that these foreign courses are approved prior to studying abroad. So lastly, we just say to get started now, um, especially because it does take depending on how much planning time you would like, we like to say to prepare for at least a year um, or around a year just to um, be able to get your academic planning done, talk with your academic advisors, figure out a program, meet with the office. Um, there's just some steps that go into it, but it is so worth it. Um, I would never regret all of the work that went into studying abroad because the payoff was absolutely incredible. The experiences I got, the friends I made, the places I got to see, um, it was absolutely the highlight of my collegiate career and I wouldn't change it for the world. So. Um, we just like to say to get started and um, 
to get started would be to attend a study abroad 101. We have these every Tuesday and Wednesday at noon via Zoom. And we also have drop in advising, which um, that's Monday through Friday from 10 to 11. And this is with our program coordinator. So this could be with Levi or Gerilyn, who are the semester um, year coordinators, or with uh, Lindsay Anderson, who is the faculty-led program coordinator. So these are just some different individuals who would be great to talk to if you have specific questions, and they their specific programs that they monitor are on our website, so you can definitely check that out before setting up a meeting with them. And go ahead and follow us on social media. Um, we do constantly keep that updated with different events we're hosting or places that people are traveling or student testimonials. Um, different information we are providing our social media is probably the first place to look so that is just um, a little bit about ways to contact us but since that's kind of wraps it up does anyone have any specific questions for us feel free to either unmute yourself or put them in the chat Um, can UMD students uh, go through U of M, like Twin Cities programs to study abroad? Yes, you can. Okay, thank you. Any U of M system um, campus program you can go through unless it's specific to that, to that campus, but I'm pretty sure you can go through regardless. Does anyone have any specific countries that they're interested in going to or any locations? Um, I'm thinking about going to either like the UK or Scotland and I was wondering when you traveled to different places on the weekends, um, how did you travel like kind of like was it cheap and like how did you get to all the different countries each weekend? Yeah, so for me, um, with living in Sterling, we had a train station in campus, on, or not in campus, in town, and I would take that to, there's two airports in Scotland that were both about like 45-ish minutes away, um, and so I just, whatever the cheaper flight was, we would pick the airport, um, but basically flights, once you get abroad, are super cheap. I would fly for like $30 there and back to different places. It was incredibly cheap there was certain airlines that you take um like an airline out of australia is tiger star or an airline in um europe is EasyJet, and they're just super cheap prices definitely you have to kind of pay attention to what you're purchasing because it you might not be able to bring a bag and that might be separate and cost a lot more but if you're being able to go for a weekend and pack it in a backpack and put it under your seat then i mean you're good i did a lot of backpacking like I would bring backpacks for like a whole weekend and so it was a very limited amount of space but you know it's worth it when you're saving money and getting to see cool places on the dime um, but yeah I was just able to take a train or a bus um, to either of the airport and then we travel so that's also something to consider when you're looking at places abroad if you do want to do a lot of traveling there are some locations that you're not close to like an airport and it might take you two hours just to get to the airport and then you have to fly out and that, you know, that could just kind of be a time, cons like a time constraint. So it might be good to look at that if traveling is a very important to you, um, just that access to um, airports and train stations and whatnot. I'll also add on for faculty led programs, um, you're able to travel prior and post to your um, program, especially because it's so um, time intensive for those two to six weeks. Um, however, if in the summer, for example, if you travel in, um, if your program starts in June, you're able to go from like, you can start in like Europe, for example, um, like 
from May up until June. You just have to meet up with your um, professors then. Um, otherwise, I did know a couple of um, friends of mine that went um, all over Spain using the busing and train system. Um, and what they did is they also like found some Airbnbs and hostels too abroad. Yeah, hostels are an, an amazing thing. They're also very cheap. <laughs> and Airbnbs are nice as well. That's what I stated, is Airbnbs are hostels. We can keep answering questions, but if you don't feel like you have any, you're free to take off. Um, Check out the website for all um, information. We do have Study Abroad 101 pre-filmed a uh, video on there as well. If you want to kind of go further in depth, that is also online, but our website does have everything you need to know. Um, so that's also a good way to get started too, is just to kind of browse the website and start looking at some programs there as well. Yay. All right, that went a lot better than earlier. So